Okay, uh, it now being six o'clock, I will call the uh, Monday, October 29th meeting, Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded for Cablecast and YouTube presentation by Area 58 Community Access Media. The video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public record. And phones on dimmer or whatever. But uh, is Tara coming in or should we just? She should be uh, first. She's, so she uh, should be here soon. I would maybe move on to something else. Uh, she was wearing a lot of hats tonight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the animal control might take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do the bandstand? Sure. So we had um, we went through the bidding process under Chapter 149 for the Town Green Bandstand Restoration Project, um, and we went back to our two lowest bidders with some different questions. At which point, the lowest bidder actually um, withdrew his application. So that left us with the second lowest bidder, um, whose references all checked out really well. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to John for a recommendation. Yeah, and this is for the masonry part of the project, mm -hmm. okay. um, which is the largest, largest component, as, as you would expect. Um, so the historical commission met last week um, after we had the information from the two bidders, i.e. one withdrawing, and then they checked out references, and the historical commission has voted to recommend uh, awarding uh, to uh, Lundy Construction, which was the second bidder. Okay, good. So we would just need a vote of the Board of Selectmen to award that project to Lundy Construction, and then I can get the ball rolling with all the paperwork for it. So moved. Second. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. When will they start work, John, do you know? Uh, will depend on the schedule, um, but our understanding is that he is not particularly limited by the weather. That mm. the, the different additives that they can use in the, in the uh, mortar and so on. Um, so, you know, in an ideal world, we would love to be able to have the Christmas tree in the gazebo at least until mm. January, and then also be able to use the gazebo in May. So that's the ideal world, and we'll see what that what we get out of that. Um, but. Mr. Lundy is, has a fair amount of experience in historic restoration. Um, and so our hope is, is that this will be, this will go as planned. Very Good. nice. Exciting. Where are they out of, John? Um, he's, he's, he's local. Local. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. He's done work in town for the people to do this stuff. And he's done work on, he's done on Cordage Park. Okay. He's references to some restoration work there and stuff. He's a long time mason. The other, uh, the other uh, bidder doesn't appear to actually be Mason. <laughs> okay. Which was, we didn't know until then, but that's why we asked additional questions. Right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Might Harry, just note John's well, doing a lot of work on a lot right. of different projects. You got all a lot of balls town. in the air. Yeah. Absolutely. We're really appreciated. I feel bad for those folks that are balls because mm. start to lose their temper. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, you wanted us to notarize some papers. No, uh, notarize for you, but I also have a policy appointment um, that's on our agenda. Okay. Um, I just wanted to see if we could adopt a local policy. This is recommended by the state. Um, because early voting, timing, and locations um, are don't fall under elections laws because um, some other towns have their early voting done just in their town clerk's office. It's not at their polling locations. There are towns that are having problems with electioneering. So candidates are going to the early voting locations with their campaign material and interfering with the process. Um, so it might be incorporated incorporated with the state laws when they make revisions to early voting but it hasn't gone through with legislature yet so this is a local policy it follows mass general law chapter 54 section 65 and um, it's the 150 foot rule um, it's easy for us here because it is our polling location so we know exactly yeah. where it is um, and this 
policy was um, taken from the town of Belmont who had time to have their town council review it. So I was able to modify um, Belmont to Plimpton. So if you wouldn't mind, um, there's more detail to it, but it's the same uh, mass general law. Um, yep. So if you could just sign the policy, it would help us. Again, not a problem here in Plimpton, but just in case. So in effect, it's what we do at the annual town meeting, yes. right? Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. what we do. At yeah. the so, end, okay. the annual elections. Yeah. Right. This one's my copy, actually. This is I, I have a copy here for us. Okay. So I, I make a motion that we uh, sign the uh, policy regarding, regarding electioneering. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I'll. Uh, and this pass is that effective along. immediately, Tara? Yes. Okay. Yep. I have the date on the bottom. Yep, this 29th day of October. Perfect. Thank you. She's always ahead. I know she is. <laughs> Who did the second on that? I did. And you got some papers? You. We have papers uh, for Tara. We have papers. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll introduce the papers. Okay. That's all right. Um, so an update on the uh, Two Brooks <coughs> Preserve, the Atwood property. Um, the bond money came in on Friday. It's been wired to uh, town council. Um, the closing date is one week from today, November 5th. Everything is in order, and uh, town council will take care of the closing. Um, we'll do an inspection, a final inspection, later this week. Town council asked for a couple of documents to be signed by us tonight. One of them is a compliance agreement that essentially says if there are some inadvertent issues in any of the doc documents that town council um, is given permission to correct them. So I'd make a motion that um, we uh, go ahead and sign this document. Um, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And this Aye. one's signed just by Aye. John. Yeah. Um, the second document is a deed acceptance document that essentially uh, authorizes us to accept the deed, um, and all three of us would sign this one. So I make a motion that we sign this deed acceptance document. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll pass that along, Thank and you. all three of us will sign that. And then either um, uh, uh, Liz or Bree is going to scan that and email them off to John, either Jonathan Eichmann, either tonight John or tomorrow. Um, and then the last little bit on that is um, uh, Jonathan asked us to vote to authorize the town administrator to sign all remaining necessary documents to complete the transaction, including a settlement statement. I'll second and so that I'll motion. make a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that's merely a vote. Great. Beautiful. Perfect. Uh, and John, can you just sign this as chairman because I sure. will notarize your documentation. Right here? Yeah. And this needs to get notarized? Yes. Right. That's yeah. what he yeah. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. And the other one's going to just come back to me. That's Wait, exciting. After so those are notarized. Can you scan them and get them, you want to them tonight? If you can, um, and just get it to all of us and to Jonathan yeah. Eichmann. Especially to Jonathan, but maybe we're we're all CC'd on that. Um, and that com should complete the process. So by meeting next Monday night, it should be done. Are you going to the uh, closing? Um, I'm not. Unfortunately, I have to be out of town. I think Linda Letty may go. Um, unfortunately, in a way, the way these closings are done now, none of us need to be there. Um, John has, Jonathan Nightman has my um, cell number and all that if anything will come up. We don't expect anything to come up. I might go just to see what yeah, goes absolutely. on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I sort of decry it a little. I mean, that moment of signing and the money changing hands and <laughs> lighting cigars. We're missing all the good stuff after all this. Okay. Um, that would be wonderful if you okay, want. Good. Um, um, and um, as far as walking the land, are you going to do that? We're going to do that later this week. Um, we're working on it. It may Maybe we're going to do it Monday. Um, okay. And just let me know I, if I can yeah. do it. I, okay. I'll, I'll pass it. that on to Linda. I won't be able to go Monday. I have an out-of-town conference, or we may do it late next week. I will include you on any of the emails. Then. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Great. it. Great. Um, Would you send me the wording of which town council wanted Liz to do? Do you have that right there? Yeah. Um, Thank you. It's uh, the end of the first paragraph underlined in okay. red. Great. Thank you. Um, 
So, okay. terrific. And as soon as we get done with that, then we go into the real estate business. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we'll jump back to our first uh, animal control officer, Griffin Webb, to discuss enforcement of uh, animal control bylaws and leash law. So I compiled, we, I, we all have a copy of it, I believe. Um, I kind of just took all of the towns mm -hmm. surrounding us. Um, I also included Mark, that's the other town I went for, but um, all the different oh, leash laws for gotcha. the towns that surround us. Um, I really think it's something we should push for because um, we've had a few instances in town that definitely could have been avoided with a leash. Um, one of them actually, the person had a leash on and it had slipped out, but um, the type of leash he was using was one of the leashes that just retract and it kind of retracted right out of the thing. So if he had had an actual leash that he was in control of, it could have pre prevented it. Um, but so I actually have, let me see if I can have it right here. Um, so I outlined. Um, Basically, what the, the law, so all the laws are different for the surrounding ones, but basically the one that I think one thing we should really have is that dogs found running at large within the town may be impounded. Um, some towns actually have a law where even on your private property, technically if it's in a common area and there's a leash, on, that there's not a leash on the dog, that could still be counted as not having a leash on. I don't think we should have that. I think it's more of just an animal should be leashed in a public place, roads, which I think a dog should be leashed anyways to protect them from getting hit by a car, from anything on the road, um, and town areas, which, I mean, other dogs are allowed in that area, so you, and if your dog's not on a leash and another dog shows up and they decide to fight, then that's an incident right there. Um, but another reason that a leash law is important too is that a lot of times we have, we actually had an incident in town where there was a dog fight in the middle of the road, and one dog te technically wasn't at fault, but, it, if, it had, if there was a leash lot, one dog would have been at fault. Um, the dog wasn't on a leash, and one dog was on a leash, and the dog actually ran over, and they had fought, and it ended up in the death of the dog. So if both of those dogs had had a leash on, if the dog um, that actually attacked that dog had a leash on, that could have been prevented as well. So I think it's something that we should definitely go forward with. Um, I don't know if anyone has any obligations to it. I, you know, I... You're saying that if we had had leash laws, it would have stopped these other incidents? Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. But were they on the, the owner's property or were... Well, that's what I mean. One of, one of these events was actually on a road. It was on a, a development. It was on a road. So both dogs, one dog was leashed walking down the road. One dog was not leashed walking mm -hmm. down the road. And the dog that was not leashed attacked the dog that was leashed, and the dog ended up dying. So if... Both those dogs were leashed like they were supposed to be, then there might that might not have happened. And the other part of that too is that, so now you have one dog. I mean, one dog that wasn't on a leash attacking the other dog. Me as the animal control officer in town, I have I can't. There's no fine or punishment, I guess, that the person who didn't have their dog on a leash has to face for the killing of the other dog because it was on town property and there was no leash law in place. So. Realistically, neither one of them is at fault. Can't we change that so that if it's on town property, there's a penalty? Well, yeah, but then we have to figure out, well, who's at fault? I mean, the biting dog, yes, would be at fault, but what would be the law that he's breaking besides biting the other dog? The, the, the law that they'd be breaking is what is in our present bylaws, um, which state pretty clearly um, that any dog in town can be declared a nuisance by reason of biting, excessive barking, howling, or in any other manner disturbing the quiet of the public. Um, and then it goes on to give you the power to investigate um, and gives you the power to bring to the selectmen um, having a hearing and then giving us the opportunity to uh, um, uh, make recommendations or make requirements uh, concerning restraint, muzzling, silencing, removing, or even disposing of the animal. Um, so in, in the bigger sense, and, I, and this is just me, and it, it's my opinion, and I, I will label it very much as me, I'm not particularly in favor of leash laws. Um, I 
I, um, I certainly see the consequences every day in my life of dogs that get into trouble, um, fighting, wrestling with other dogs. But equally, I spend my day seeing dog after dog that's kind of been driven half crazy because it can't get out and run. And I, I think one of the consequences of a leash law is almost the, an, um, a, a, a requirement or at least an extreme need for them to have leash-free areas in town. And I think one of the problems with leash laws is a lot of the times there's problems um, are in towns where there are leash laws is because people aren't doing it anyway. Um, so my, my sense is that the present bylaw gives you plenty of power to deal with any of these issues. And, um, I, I certainly the piece about needing a leash law on your own property for your animals. Correct. I'd have to move out of town no, if we're going to have that. I don't agree so, with that either. Uh, but I mean, I agree with what you're saying, but also I think that the leash law would work more as a preventative. Like yes, a after the fact, I can definitely go and I can report this to you guys, and we can have a meeting. We can figure it out. But the leash law would be a preventative to prevent the dogs from fighting. Um, and also, I mean. I there sh I agree that there should be a lot of times people are d aren't for the leash law because they want to have a spot for their animals to run which I agree every dog deserves to run but that's something we could work into the leash law we could have spots in town where animals are allowed to be off leash where they're not required to be on a leash but I think public roads and um, developments and cul-de-sacs all those there there's people living all around you there's dogs that could be loose at any given house they could be on their own property and you could have a dog walking around on a leash and another dog run off the property. So it could, I mean, regardless, either way, I feel like there's some spots in town where a leash law would really work as a preventative. Um, but, of course, that dog that runs off that isn't on the leash uh, immediately then uh, um, would be perceived as disturbing the peace and, you know, and you have power to move right. on. I mean, I, I totally salute your... Um, um, enthusiasm for this and wanting the power to do this job well and right and in reading over our present bylaws I, it feels to me like they could use some review and rewrite mm -hmm. even if they're just cleaning up a little but I, I do feel like even what we have now gives you and us plenty of power to control this just my opinion. Uh, well, in Section 11 does clearly state that um, uh, restraint and muzzling, and number two is, is not restrained by a lead or chain of less than seven feet that is a suitable test for the size of the dog being restrained. So it's number one is it's outside the enclosure of the owner and keeper and not under the immediate care of the owner or keeper and that number two it's not restrained so you do in essence i mean that does say that the dog needs to be restrained and under the control of the owner at all times and if not you have the ability to order the dog restrained so i agree with you that our existing bylaws do have some teeth in them, but maybe we need to beef up the penalties for um, for violation rather than trying to make it more strict. I just I think that it's gonna end up being I don't want to see you trolling the streets looking for dogs. I don't think we have the time or the resources to do that while. It, there's certainly some merit to that. I think that we need to address issues with um, dog bites and, and nuisances and complaints as they come up rather than um, without a van, you know, you patrolling the, tree, the streets, picking up dogs, and then us issuing fines. So I just don't think we're in a position to do that type of enforcement yet. Right. You know, down the road maybe, but I think we need to hit, you know, baby steps about tightening up we, what we've got. Right. And I agree, this, uh, there is definitely room for improvement in the way that this is written to tighten things up yeah. so that um, mm -hmm. he's able to do his job effectively. And right. I, I can't stress enough. I mean, we want to give you uh, all the tools you need right. to do a good job. But um, I think, was there? Okay. Yeah. My name is Mr. Quinley. I live at 125 County Road. Okay. Let, not last day, the 18th of October. I was letting my dog out in my back. I, I have a back door and I have a three foot fence area in. So I have two beagles. I let the two beagles out. And all of a sudden they get very active. All of a sudden I realized the neighbor dog, 
on, on from the end the robber was in my yard. So I said, okay, I'm going to try to get my dogs back into my house. Within two seconds, that dog, which was Pot Pitbull, jumped my fence. Now Holy I God. am in my fence in area with a pit bull after my beagle. Put my beagle down on the ground and went for his throat. I mean, it was, I, I just couldn't, it was that fast. Luckily, I just happened to rip, and there was a little rape for the <coughs> bucket scooper, everything's there, and I was able to go over to him. He would not release, and I pounded on I I pushed him, because he had hit the bite around my dog's neck, okay? It was there. If I released I didn't get to him, he was going to shake and break mm -hmm. the leg, that thing. I, I did this for 15 minutes. My wife was in the house, but she was at the far end of the house. She could, I couldn't get to a cell phone or anything. After that, finally, the neighbor must have heard me. I'm screaming. I can't even talk anymore. But mm. I, I couldn't get him off. I was at the point that I would think I might have to try to actually physically pull him out of there. I don't know whether to get bit or nothing, okay? But I was watching my dog get torn to shreds and I think everything there. He did come over after the 15 minutes. He appeared and he grabbed his dog and pulled it off my dog and then I picked up my dog. And my dog's bleeding from the throat and everything is not a pretty scene. He left. I back in the house. The wife called the dog control in there. So, so it's a terrible thing. Now, Dan said that he had the dog on the leash and broke loose. Well, leash guards are leash guards, but it still maybe it would help or not. But once he broke free, he was over on my. He, he leaped the fence and viciously. The, the vet said it was a killer type of thing. He had him by the neck. It wasn't, you know, going back and forth between two dogs. He was just right on the dog's neck. And if I hadn't been there, or my wife had been there, she's only 81 pounds. It would have been all over. It would have been a dead dog right there. I got him away and everything. So now we quarantine the two dogs and everything. But now the quarantine is over. I want the dog officer to have the authority to have him muzzle that dog. Mm -hmm. I fear when I go out my back yard that this dog is going to, once the dog senses that, I know if he's out and leaves, he breaks over, he's coming to my yard. And I can't go through that again. My personal opinion. A leash dog would be nice, but still, you've got to have the protection that he can go in and say, no, you've got to muzzle that dog, type of thing, you know? And in fact, we have that right now, and it's yeah, in it's in the form exactly. of a written complaint. That's why I came down. We yeah. talking about the lease. Um, he did not have authority, but you're saying in the bylaws, it is there. It but, is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I, and there's absolutely no reason why we can't go through that process. A written complaint to the animal yeah. control officer. Okay. He investigating and then bringing to us, and then we have a public hearing. We yeah. invite you in. We invite in the owner of the other dog. We have the power to um, make corrective measures or require no. corrective measures. And I think that um, yeah. you've got the the right in the bylaw to order the dog muzzled until the time of the hearing. Yeah. 14 days. Yeah. Right. Um, the only issue, too, though, is that the dog automatically has to be put on quarantine for 10 days. Right. So it's in the house for 10 days. If it's outside, it's on a leash anyways for quarantine. Um, so, at my, I mean, this is, I guess, my question to you guys. After the 10 days, that leaves me, according to Section 11, that leaves me just four days that I can tell them they need to have the dog muzzle for the next four no, days. No, I would think the 14 days would start after, after the quarantine, quarantine is out because um, the quarantine But even is after that, what, what alternatives would you want? I mean, it's 24 days later, but you still got a dog that yeah. potentially can. Right. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, my dog is still alive, and I don't want him. That dog could come out any time. You know. Everything. You know, well, my, my headset a little bit is that the real problem is the owner. Yeah. Right. You know that somehow we have to have penalties in place so that an owner thinks twice about having a dog that's got right. they taking that kind of risk with. Right. Um, he also never asked how my dog was doing. Never. Yeah. 
So I and we totally sympathize, sympathize with I, you. I, 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 I boy, do I know how unbelievably adrenaline filled those situations are. Yeah. And your puppy and I, I, I mean, I, I would encourage that we move forward with this but, and that we have a hearing. Okay, but we need something with penalties put in place. So in the future, it adds as a. Well, there, there, in fact, are there penalties. There are penalties in um, here. Uh, they're kind of low, and I think we should increase mm -hmm. them. Uh, I think the first offense may be fifty or a hundred dollars. Might not I, even be that there, much. There's no yeah. reason we that we can't increase. Well, how about how do I go about doing that? So is that something that, like, I mean, I know the other town I work in, I immediately write a citation. Is that how do I have to go to you guys and we have to send out something, or is it something that I should be able to actually write a citation for what's in the bylaw? I think you are authorized to just write it per the bylaws, that you're, you can or issue a citation. He is authorized to submit a written report to us with his findings and recommendations. Right. So he could recommend the animal control officer, after his investigation, may issue an interim order that such dog be restrained or muzzled for a period not to exceed 14 days right. to enable us to, um, to get your report together and to schedule the hearing right. so that the, your issue or your order is still in place. Right before we have the yeah. hearing. But, um, I mean, he, you're our agent, so I think that you do in here. Any owner who fails to comply with an order, the Board of Selectmen, Animal Control Officer, or District Court shall face a complaint in District Court and may pay a non-criminal. Yeah, I mean, you've got... I know. In I, my I'm, reading, you have the authority yeah. to write these citations. In Marshfield, I do, and I don't know if it's because I'm under the police department. I don't know if that makes a difference, but as the ACL, I'm allowed to just actually issue bylaw violations. And I just, I mean, my other question, too, is in the bylaws, I'm a little confused because that's a, you go to the very first page of where the animal control ones are, and it gives all the definitions. The very last definition is the non-criminal citation for violation of dog control bylaws. And it says the different offenses, but I'm not sure what those offenses are for because after each offense in the bylaw it tells you what the fine is, where this is right. just kind of like a generic like 25 for the first. So I'm not sure which offense to go by. I would go to the section. In the section. Because the section disturbing the peace, it looks like may pay a non-criminal disposition of 50 bucks for the first offense and 100 for a second. You know, I'd like to see us raise that dramatically at the discretion of uh, the animal control officer and ourselves. I'd like to see it something like five hundred dollars, great, so I that agree. people will think twice before. Right. No, um, and I know like it's also who pays. Um, you must have had some expensive veterinarian bills. Right. Who pays for and that? And he had not come and offered to pay anything. I mean, somehow that we should have something. Well, that's something. included in the hearing. When we do yeah. our hearing, right. you'll submit your bill. Do we have bill, the power yeah. to? And I believe we do have the power, uh, don't we, to not, recommend that they pay? Maybe just a recommendation. I, I think that could yeah. be a recommendation. I think that probably becomes a, a, a Personal legal matter. Personal uh, yeah. matter in court? Yeah, I mean, okay. it's a small claims court and, <laughs> okay. and all that stuff. But I, I, I mean, we, however, can do the things um, or require the things that hopefully will prevent this. Um, I mean, a muzzle, obviously we have to have a hearing and hear the other side, but having this pup muzzled all the time makes huge sense as a first step in this process. Well, um, and right. I, I For the, the dog safety, too, that was the Absolutely. attacker. That when you say that, Mike, are you saying ongoing, beyond the 25 days? Oh, yeah. The dog okay. can be ordered okay. permanently restrained okay. Okay. or permanently muzzled. I mean, I, if it's really, we, we should okay. think of that in terms of that being one of the possibilities sure. now. Of course, each situation is different. And, I mean, we should have a hearing on this. We yeah. certainly yeah. should. John, you had a comment? Yeah, so before we put in this version of the bylaw, we had a very simple bylaw. Um, and I asked Harry just to kind of bring it up at some point because in there was a, was a phrase that I think is sort of buried in this but it was that the do any dog must be under the owner's control at all times. Right. Okay, and I'm a very, very big proponent of training. And, you know, you go, you go to England and you go for a walk in a field and you pass people with their dogs. Yeah. That dog will not even give you the time of day. The dog will not. The dog walks along the side and it's just until, and, and over and over again, because the dog is really well trained. And you have a lot of folks out there who just don't invest the time or the money or the energy into it. 
and you have dogs that, for whatever reason, are behaving this way and should be dealt with. And you put your dog out on a lead in your yard and the dog breaks loose, that's your fault. It's not the dog's fault, that's your fault, because you're supposed to be under control of your animal at all times. And I'm, I'm not quite, and that's why I came, because I saw a leash law, and I'm trying yeah. to think about, you know, my dog wanders around, stays with us, yeah. but you know, my front yard's a town green. He doesn't right. know that this side of the driveway is right. his property, yeah. and right here isn't, mm -hmm. and we keep him under control at all times, yeah. you know? And so that's the piece, but I do think we have an issue that people don't understand that. You know, my wife just had an incident down on West Street with a couple of dogs that would, did not want to let her go by. You know, and even though she was doing everything she's supposed to, and there was, they were well off of their property. So I think it's really important, but I think if we do do some tweaks to this, just really some nice upfront clean language about baseline expectations, and then perhaps we should incorporate that in with the dog license mail. You know, where we remind people, these are some basic requirements, and then I, you know, I like the idea, we should define should go way up, you know, not define not to exceed X, which then gives the, the, the yeah. animal control yeah. officer great leeway. Because sometimes the dog may be out, who knows what the issue is, the dog's scared more so than aggressive, and then, okay, something to remind you, you shouldn't do that, versus a dog that clearly should be kept well contained and should get the appropriate training so that dog can live a appropriate life. Well, if we did something like that, then in his case, where the dog ran off of his of his neighbor's property, the dog wouldn't be under the neighbor's control, control so that, right. that could be something that could be fine. And I know... Another thing too is like you guys said, we could even do a baseline for have like first offense a certain price and do four offenses. And I know that in Marshfield, anytime I deem a dog dangerous because it's either biting dog or whatnot, the fine can go up to two hundred. So we could do something like that where it's just a normal like four line like twenty five dollar fifty seventy five hundred, and then at any point if the dog's a dangerous dog, the fine goes way up. Um. So the under owner's control is, yeah, is the language used. Um, it, it's actually, it is buried in here. It is here a couple of times. I just, but I just read through it. I went home and I read through yeah. it before I came down, and I didn't find it. So yeah. you found it better than I did. But yeah. I, was um, looking like, I was looking for it because I knew it used to say that, and I knew it I still did. But, yeah. And, and it's certainly used especially in parks and beaches where dogs right. do run free. So, I mean, it seems like we're, we're two issues here. I mean, one, we, we, I think we're probably in agreement that the bylaws need to get spiffed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more specific issue that yeah. uh, I think we'd be glad to um, work with if a formal complaint comes okay. from you. Yeah. Okay. Work that out. Okay. Um, Are we having a hearing? Um, we need a recommendation yeah. from an investigation. Yeah. Yeah. Investigation yeah. and right. And recommendation. And recommendation. And um, we, we meet. Schedule it. Right. We meet November so we, 5th. We and meet then next then week and then two, two weeks, weeks after that. So um, that's the 5th the or the 19th. And I think uh, there's um, posting requirements with a hearing as well, aren't there? Yes. Oh. Public hearing. Um, it depends on what this individual bylaw says. Um, it would be the 48-hour posting unless the, the bylaw specifies some a time yeah. frame greater than that. I don't think it, it does. does. Not. And okay, and some bylaws specify like notice in the newspaper or different things or abutters, but if that's not in here, then no. Okay. We would just want to notify both parties. Okay. And I think at least like a seven-day notification, I think, is probably appropriate for. Um. Um, the last, owners. the last time we looked at one of these, town council recommended seven days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So who is Griffin going to work with on this? Glad to work with him on it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, can he, as a next step, say tomorrow, send something to that owner that requests, um, like, the muzzling temporarily? Mm-hmm. I mean, he has the power has within the, power. the bylaw to okay. do that right? Um, for See, two weeks. My question, he said because there was no leash law, he didn't right. really, unless he went to the board, he, and then yeah. you could give him the power to do it. Well, he has that power now for oh, two yes. weeks. Um, so we so get through two it. weeks. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, too, is another bylaw that we don't currently have. I don't know if it's something that we would want to, but I know I've had a few instances with livestock in the middle of the road, like goats, whatnot. <laughs> Welcome Sometimes. to Plumpton. Yeah. 
Some towns have an actual bylaw where, for example, this bylaw, restraint of domestic livestock, no person who owns, rents, keeps, or otherwise has the care, custody, control of any hooved animal um, should allow the animal to run at large or be under restraint. So it's basically just a law stating that you can be fined for doing that. And I don't know if that's something, I know since I've started this job, I've come across, I think, four or five times where this has happened. Same, some, twice was the same person. Um, and I'm having an issue with uh, sheep right now that a company that they're constantly just getting loose. And I'm just wondering if that's something we can maybe incorporate into our bylaws um, where maybe they could be fined for it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I know. That's so, okay. so, you know, I will contact uh, the bylaw review committee and maybe you and I need to talk a little and then go in and chat with them and they can get to work on that along the way. Yeah. Um, I think we'll have to have a separate thing for goats because they're much more mischievous. And yeah, right. <laughs> pigs are a little less mischievous. Yeah, horse. Horses can be mischievous. <laughs> chickens. Yeah. Chickens. Oh, oh, yeah. Said. Chickens are uncontrollable. <laughs> yeah. I love them at the gas station. <laughs> Yeah, it, I think the bylaw review committee is more than uh, happy to work with us to yeah, yeah. Um, to tighten this up so that um, we can have something for town meeting next year. Okay. Thank you. And then lastly, I just um, for unlicensed dogs in the bylaws, we have a bylaw for unlicensed dogs saying that all dogs have to be licensed in the town of Plumpton. But unless I'm missing it, I don't think we have any fines for an unlicensed dog. That if I come across it. So, like, if somebody's dog's not licensed and you come in late, there's a late fee. But I'm pretty sure there's no fines in place where if I come across the li unlicensed dog that I can... Because I, I had someone that their dog was unlicensed. I told them to go to the town hall. They haven't gone to the town hall yet. Yeah, I, there, there should be a penalty for right. that. Because um, we don't know if they're vaccinated. Well, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what I mean. I, doing barn inspections, I'm coming across a lot of houses. I see the dogs. I check the license book. They're not licensed. So... Yeah. That's just another thing. I and like I said, unless I'm reading it wrong, I don't think we, we have just incorporate that into yeah, what we're going to so look at. So absolutely, that would yeah. go into the bylaw yeah. as well. And I think that was really it for me. Right. Um, I probably need a couple weeks on a couple other projects, but then maybe you and I can work together, and um, um, we may not totally agree. But the more we can have a united front right. when we go yeah, into absolutely. the bylaw review committee, the better. And certainly, we'll consult with select. I'd be glad to, you know, sit with you if you want. Okay, great. Thank you. Hey, we want to support you, yeah, but yeah. we want to make sure we go after the right, right thing. Yeah, no, right. definitely. The owners, I think, are the real problem. Oh no, it's not the animals. Always. <laughs> Well, I think you'd have to refer to the non-criminal citation for violation of dog control bylaws okay. for the um, violation of um, re licensing your that's dog. That's what I thought. That's what I put at the bottom, but I wasn't sure because yep. it didn't directly yep. say I think it. that's kind of a catch-all. Okay. If it doesn't say that's specify, true. then that's what you've got. All right. I'm so glad true. you came in. You've got some yeah. really good ideas. Yeah, and definitely. And then lastly, just the... Um, I just have to get the actual criminal citation book, the non-criminal citation book. Okay. So I'm not sure where to go about getting that or... No idea. I know the police department has one, but I just it's just the actual bylaw violation book. Can they tell you where we can get one? Yeah, I can go to. The, I can talk to the chief. Yeah, talk to the chief so that we can get you your sure. own book. Yeah, okay. and then we can we can order you one. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll take care of that take for care you. Of that. All right. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming Appreciate in. It. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you, sir. I'm sorry about right. your your dog. Yeah, I, I hope she's better now. And good. Recovering good. And good. Very good. I'm still scared about going out the door. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's traumatizing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm. I thought you were coming next week. I'm in Phoenix. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good place to be. You're where now? Phoenix. Nice. Wow. Not a bad place to be. I think I come back the same day, but it's a long walk. Could you pass that back down to Mark? Thank you. Thanks. So, um, maybe we can take up Richard now while he's here under technology. Sure. Um, we talked to, I assume you're here to talk about the sound system? The, that and a couple other things. Okay. Yes. Sure. Uh, the first thing is we are uh, installing our new playback system. Among the things of the playback system is it will afford us the ability to go live from the primary selectman room. If you guys are interested, 
in going live. Uh, it will afford us the ability to do so sort of regardless of whether you're interested, but we, don't, we won't go live unless you want us to. Um, what it will allow us to do also is have a direct signal for the feed back to the studio, which will allow us, at least in theory, to get it on the air quicker uh, once it's been shot. Are any of the other towns doing it? Uh, Carver's gone live for years. Okay. Um, Halifax is getting me the feed. There's, there's one thing I need from you guys. Um, Halifax is getting it for me. They're not sure if they want to go live yet mm -hmm. or not. Um, generally speaking, we could even extend it to town meetings, but town meetings going live are problematic because you could lose your quorum because people would just sit home. Select meetings yeah. are a little bit different. It may make more sense to have them go live. The biggest thing I need is a static IP address from the room to be able to send it back. Um, that's um, I think I think there may only be one in the town, which is mind-boggling in a sense. But I know the the difference in cost between one and five is five dollars total per month. Really? Yeah. So um, the only thing is, when it goes to that upgrade, you'll sort of throw everything else off kilter, and will have to be renewed or basically restructured. The one that's currently in place will have to be done. This would it becomes necessary for each location that we would do it from to have a static IP address for us. So we could, for instance, go live from the Dennett, but we need a static IP address from the Dennett as well. Um, but at least to start with, we were thinking about doing it for here. The playback system will allow us a lot more uh, ability to better um, provide the content. It's going to be uh, in HD, and uh, so that's that side of it. We've got it. Mostly installed today, but this IP address thing is becoming a nightmare. And uh, we couldn't get in touch with the technology person in Carver today, so it was a little bit of a problem in that end. But just about everything's all set. It looks really good. It's a beautiful system. Mark is a little more familiar with it than... Uh, so does this take like a day to set up and... Well, the IP address wouldn't take all that long, but yeah, probably within a day it can be done. Um, it's mostly just a question of getting all the moving pieces in place. Uh, there's basically, it's going to work with an encoder and a decoder. So we'll be an encoder on this end, decoder back at our end, so the signal will pass through and then we'll be able to ingest it. And basically, the meeting as it happens will be ingested if, if you're going live or however we work that, because technically once we're hooked up, we can take the signal even if we're not broadcasting it out live mm -hmm. and still have it generated back into our system so the minute the meeting's over, it could theoretically go back on the air. You may want to do some graphics and touch-ups on it, but that's a whole other issue. Um, anything else about that? Um, yeah, we haven't, that's we haven't really today. talked about this, whether going live is something that makes sense for us. Um, I don't think we get a lot of people looking at what we're doing now anyway, so if going live would help, I don't see a big problem. But What's the difference for the viewers at home? Uh, well, the biggest thing, I guess, from what it would technically be, well, they'd be able to see it live, right? So within just a few seconds, there'd probably be a tiny bit of lag, but that would be the first thing. The second thing would be we would get it ingested relatively quickly and therefore be able to turn it back around and get it back on the air quickly. Um, the only thing we would then do if it's coming back to the studio is probably add graphics, though there are ways of putting graphics on even from here which would be another step on teaching our videographers how to do it, but it could be done. So graphics like, for instance? Like the date of the meeting, what meet the meeting is, oh, okay, and opening okay, or close sure. to the meeting. Yeah, okay. Theoretically, though you have beautiful little signs, we could also do lower thirds for everyone yeah. if we wanted to. Yeah. Um, but that puts a little more on this on the videographer. So if, we're, if we kick off at 8 o'clock, yeah. when would the person sitting at home in front of the TV see it? If we're going live, yeah, eight o'clock. Exactly basically. at the yeah, pretty okay. much exactly at the time. I mean, there'd be theoretically some sort of delay, but for this, there would be a couple of minutes, not. maybe. Yeah, not yeah. even that. Okay, we're talking about a few seconds yeah. at most. <laughs> I just yeah. wonder how that's how that would work if. Um, I mean, what if people are contacting us? You know. From home. You mean calling in? Calling way? in. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, is that would that be a violation of open meeting? What do they law? do in Kavanaugh? 
Um, very rarely does anyone call in. The only time they call in basically is to tell us when something's not working right. Yeah. And they tell Ron, and Ron texts me or something. And um, They have it go live. The selectmen meetings go live. The school committee meetings go live. The redevelopment authority meetings go live. And I'm thinking there's one other. Maybe it's the zoning board of appeals. Only when they're located in the one primary room. Sure. Sure. Otherwise, they, they go. So, if it was in a room like this, like we're doing tonight, it would right. not be. It would probably not yep. go live. Although yep. this building is small enough, depending on wiring, it might be able to do it. Yeah. Well, I don't have a problem with it. A town meeting, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, I agree with that. For attendance reasons, um, I doubt there's this burning desire to <laughs> know right away what we're up to. But well, I, yeah, if somebody um, wasn't happy, they could jump in their car and come down well, for the meeting. That's a possibility, right? I mean, yeah. you could actually have some more, more, more participation. There's something that's going on that they want to speak yeah. on. Yeah. Or just plain more interest, which is uh, Not which a bad is thing. Fine. Yeah, I, I kind of like it from, because most things, you know, you think about something's on your mind and you want to see it. And since we're broadcasting later, you know, yeah. it's two days later, people may say, oh, I, Yeah, it's well, after I, the fact, yeah, right. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Or it's not a burning issue. So I am talking with Mike, is that his name? Yes, yeah, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Gutierrez? Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Rodriguez, yeah. Well, it's okay. I've got about a million names <laughs> on it. But, uh, yeah, about what it would take to uh, Get have there. that happen, and, and we'll see what now, is it a big deal from his side? Because we've got him on a number of things that we need to get done. It shouldn't be that big a deal. Okay. Um, in fact, we added five IP addresses to the studio today um, in about 15 minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it shouldn't really be a big deal. It's mostly just getting us that hooked up and making sure it's dedicated to our usage. Do you want to think about it, or do you want to say Jeez, go Jeez, I'm going to have to watch my language. <laughs> do you have the five-second delay? <laughs> you don't have it now, so... <laughs> um. <laughs> so I, I, I sort of missed it at the beginning. There was some cost associated mm. with this? It's, I, from what I could tell from what we did, one IP address is $20 a month and five is $25 a month. So it's an extra five bucks a month. For okay. the other four additional. Okay, so, so it's minimal. Minimal, yeah. I, I have no problem with uh, feeling yeah. like it's okay. I, let's, I agree. Let's put our foot in the pool and see. All right, so okay. we'll see what yeah. we can do. I'll talk with um, Access AD and we'll get you guys set up. I'll talk with Mike tomorrow again to, to further get a sense. I know that the uh, the main IT person from Access AD is going to be down on Thursday. Okay. So we'll see what we can do. What's his name? Uh, his name, it's not Brad, it's Mike something. Okay. His okay. last name escapes me at the moment. Mm -hmm. but way too many Michael. We did have a fellow come out here when we were looking at the sound mm -hmm. system. Yeah. yeah. Which brings us to that. The sound, sound system. system. Okay. Our problem with that is realistically what needs to happen is people need to use microphones. Because if we open up the microphones and amplify the room, we're going to pick up a lot of sound that's going to pick up all the sound in the room. And if it's amplified, it's going to make it harder to hear whatever is going on that we actually want to have happen. Um, ideally, people would go up to a microphone, be it on a podium or at a table. We could go with a wireless mic. The wireless mic, though, unless it's the right mic, can also pick up a lot of sound. If it's the right mic, you're still talking about a tremendous use of batteries, about eight batteries per meeting. Mm. Not that they necessarily run out in one meeting, but you don't want them to run out in the middle of a meeting because you're pulling yeah. out. So that gets to be a little expensive. But it is imperative. The only way you're going to get good sound, either in the room with speakers or not, is people have to use microphones. If they're not, then you're just going to end up with a whole lot of extra sound. Um, these microphones are pretty good, but if you point one towards the, the crowd, which is going to be our best bet for picking people up a ways away, they're going to pick up a lot of sound. Uh, when they're on a table, generally speaking, for instance, uh, the um, what meeting? This, these building safety committee meeting generally has one or two of these on the table, and what you hear most clearly is people opening up books on top of them, sure. which is really yeah. remarkable. Um, but it does happen, and it's one of those things where if we can get people to properly use the microphones, the sound's going to be better both in the room and outside of it. So now I'm trying to figure out how to do the sound in the room. We talked about this a little bit, which is going to involve splitting the sound before it goes out to cable cast or be recorded. So if all the sound has to come back into the system first, but then before it goes to either the recording or back to the speakers in the room, it has to be split so it can go to both locations. 
There might be another way of doing it slightly for amplification in the room, but then it's going to be could be noisy in the room. That's my only concern with that. Um, the problem is the more extraneous noise you get, obviously, the less easy it is. It, you sort of miss the whole purpose or defeat the whole purpose of having it amplified. Microphones are the key, though. If you can have a 5,000 watt amplifier in there and if people aren't using microphones, it's just going to be a lot of noise. Or no noise at all if there's no microphones. Mm -hmm. I, I resisted, you know, the podium in a sense because when we've had like NISA, but I guess the only way we can really do this and have it work is to have them use the podium or the table with the speaker, unless. Which adds sort of some order and sensible it does. order. Yes. Not it the worst does. thing in the world. Yeah. And it stops that talking over each other and um, gives us a chance to say, who are you? What's your name? Yeah. The, um, the only drawback I saw with it, I, th I think it would inhibit some people from coming out. But, yeah. you know, there's a yeah. yin and a yang to everything, so. Yeah. I um, suggested, what if they stood? It still doesn't help us with amplification to come back in cleanly for audio. That's the big thing. Um, Even with some of those mounted to the front of well, the... Well, you're still getting a lot of potential blockage of other people and whatever. You're better off with the sound coming in directly. Okay. Is the best <coughs> thing. But... So if we go to the podium and the table, we're basically doing what we have now and right yeah and and the problem you'll have because we always run into it is you'll have the person with a big voice who says well i've got a big voice i don't need yeah. to use it no yeah. you do yeah because we the see that at town meeting too right everybody thing, if you're doing that you're gonna have all that white noise sort of the staticky sort yeah. of noise when it comes in because it's picking up all that to try and figure out this person sure voice. so it really is important to use the microphone okay. and use them properly all right so I'm missing a step here. So if we do that, then we still need speakers. We still have to wire that room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, There's a couple ways of doing that. And you've taken a look at the proposals we have <laughs> so far? I actually haven't taken a look at those specifically. Okay. okay. Uh, we're trying to figure out a solution for you that won't... Inexpensive. That. Right. Cheap. Be inexpensive. You already have a speaker in there. We've used it for a special town meeting at least once or twice in, in that room. Um, I'm going to have Will come down and the two of us are going to try and figure out how to uh, reroute it so we can split it and not lose quality from the recorded sound while still amplifying the room. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just start telling people they have to use the podium on the table. Um, I sort of like that. I, I, I like that it just, too. That just that, um, enforces <laughs> just some order. Some and order. There's still a level of decorum. Right. Thank you. Exactly. Guys, That's the word. Here. It's just, it's more control. Yep. It's not a feeding frenzy yeah. like sometimes it can boil okay. up. Okay. What else is on right now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Yeah. Enjoy uh, Phoenix. Okay. Hey, we have on here procurement process discussion. Is that yours, Liz? Or? That was mine. Um, it was something that I started working on where I'm designated as the chief procurement officer. I have the ability to sign up certain department heads to almost delegate sort of secondary authority to them. Mm -hmm. It looks like in the past in town um, that authority was given to the police chief, the fire chief, the highway superintendent. Um, so I was thinking of renewing those forms. Barbara would like, if we are going that route again and we want some of those individual departments to be able to essentially order their own supplies and services um, and follow that process. Is I there a, a maximum uh, so that kicks in so that you review it too? Well, so that's what I wanted to establish the process for. So before it looks like, um, like the former fire chief was one, um, police chief and everything, but there was nothing really that went along with that. Mm -hmm. So my only concern would be I wouldn't want anybody off and running doing their own thing and then find out that maybe they weren't aware of something or if regulations changed. Um, so I was looking at some different places and I actually found um, a few good ones. And basically it's just um, what I've been working on. It's kind of a one page form that talks about all the different categories that there are under procurement, like whether it be 30B or Chapter 149, and kind of how you gauge which category it falls into. And then it tells you the requirements. Um, it takes the chart that the state gives out 
and breaks it down. So say for 30B, and then if your project was estimated to be under 10,000, then you follow along and okay, this is all I need mm -hmm. to do. And it walks you through the steps. Um, and then there would be a form for those department heads if we designate them, where they actually check off which process they're following, what the project's for, and they just sign it and give it to me so that I could share it with the board so that we all know sure. what's going on basically. Um, and then there are copies of like more specific information on each statute that I could give to the department heads um, just to have basically for reference. And when you delegate that authority to them and fill out the form, it goes to the state. Um, but I think in the past there may have been some kind of misconception that those people were free to just do all their own stuff. Um, but they're technically still my responsibility. Right. So I would want to know if it was a bigger project, like say they were going to do, I don't know, a large scale project at the fire station, let's say. I would yeah. want to be involved to make sure that it was advertised properly. If it needed to go, say, in the central register or put on combis, any of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think it would help kind of spell everything out. And also, too, so that people, say, like the historical commission, when they wanted to do the projects, um, at the bandstand, for instance, it wouldn't be so like, oh, what do we need to do? You know, what are the amounts? It would be something easy to look at that you could just hand off to different departments and say, this is what's entailed. So if your project's under this amount, feel free to go out and get some estimates and use best practices and document the process. Or if it's more than that, come to me and we'll walk you through it and, and do it that way. So it was something that I've been working on. Um, I would probably have something that I could share for maybe the November 5th meeting and Good. could take a look. I don't want to make it too much out of it, but yeah. at the same time I just think it would be helpful to yeah. have something. I think it's, uh, I think it's smart. Uh, in the past I know, probably a long time ago, uh, you know, people were splitting projects so that they could stay under the limit. And that's what I would not want to lose control mm -hmm. of. But other than that, I think this is a great idea. So that go for it. Okay, I'll come back Great. with something then for the next meeting that we can <clears throat> so kind of look at and decide if you want to formalize it or just sort of sure. leave it unwritten. So add it to the 11.5 yeah. list. Yeah. Right. Do you want it as a topic or under your updates list? Um, I would put it as a specific topic okay. just in <clears throat> case the board takes a vote on anything. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one's rescinding of planning board appointment. Do you have what we need to do or was Tara, what, how is that going to proceed? Um, so that was going to proceed based on my last discussion with the planning board chair and <coughs> the town clerk. Um, they had requested us to please rescind the appointment that was made for that to fill that planning board vacancy. Um, I guess in the past where they're an elected board, that them being the planning board, um, they wanted to follow a process whereby they um, interview different candidates and then actually give us a written recommendation um, mm -hmm. and then the board would appoint. So um, no harm was done, but we kind of put the cart before the horse, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so do just we just need a motion? To, you just a vote to rescind um, the appointment that was made before. Um, and then we'll await further direction from the planning board because I believe the chair um, did publish a notice in the newspaper yep. that there was a vacancy and everything. So we just want to kind of okay. let them do the process and then we can re-vote and put somebody on there. All right. I'll make a motion that we rescind our vote of um, October 15th to appoint Irv Butler to the planning board. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And in the future, we'll just make sure that we've got department head I think signatures. In the future, where there's a vacancy on a board like that, we should we'll know now that we can make sure we get something yep. in writing from yep. them. Good. From elected boards. For elected right. boards, not appointed boards. Appointed That's boards. That's an important I, yeah. We, distinction we, we've to kind make. of done that as a courtesy, I think, but we probably right. Um, but that that's optional. Appointed boards are still your appointments, right. but the planning board with them being elected, it put them in a slightly different sure. 
yeah. situation. Okay. okay, all boards and committees communications planning discussion. We talked about doing this, and I kind of lost the thread of where we are and what we're thinking. Um, and it feels like we talked about it briefly about a month ago, and we thought maybe it would be a good idea. And mm -hmm. um, seems like we'd have to maybe choose a date and choose a theme. Yeah, I agree. Was this with um, Rich again? Just well, the, that was one of the questions. Does it that had a legal low, you know theme to it? Uh, do we want to do that, or do we just want to make it an open discussion? Those tend not to go so well, in my mind, if you don't have a way yeah. of controlling them. I enjoyed the the legal piece, and since so many questions come up all the time, I... I, I what feedback I got was very positive. Yeah, I think everyone enjoyed it, and, I, you know, we we and so many other committees spend so much time kind of agonizing over the right way, the wrong way, and yeah. worrying about stuff when a simple answer um, solves a lot of those issues. So I, I think I wouldn't have a problem with doing the exact same thing. Bring in Rich in, if he's willing to yeah. do a uh, department head meeting sure. again. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll reach out to him. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, after the first of the year or something like that? Yeah, you know, it's boring in January. I mean, yeah, why yeah. don't we try okay. to do, do something in January, February? All right. Let me see what his schedule is, too, and then... Right. Um, maybe Liz and I could just game plan something that might, you know... Absolutely. you guys and mm -hmm. make sure yep. we're all right. I mean, maybe we can refine the legal thing so it's not wide open, but um, uh, you know, proper, uh, we'll have to think there about this. There's been a lot of changes to um, open <coughs> meeting law over the last little bit and some of the public records laws. And what I've seen places do sometimes is they bring in town council, or Rich certainly would be um, an expert as well. And... Um, Sometimes it can actually fulfill requirements that the town clerk has as far as disseminating new information for that. So yeah. it might be worth also looping Tara in sure. just in case she has, like if there's another, yep. I don't know, but if there's another update coming out for open meeting law or something to kind of make sure that that if she needs to host something yeah. similar anyway to get everybody on yeah. board. Like sometimes they do it with the ethics training too, right. like when it's time to... Yeah. do the certificates yeah. and everything just to kind of get everybody's needs taken care of at once. Maybe you could try to find the memo we sent last time. I can't remember how yeah. we worded it, but it did really promote some good discussion. Yeah. And it was great just to find out what's going on with other departments. It was. And it, it seemed to me that they were... Uh, they were kind of searching for, you know, we know we can come to you guys for <coughs> KP, but we're kind of confused about when and how and mm -hmm. why. and mm -hmm. you know, yep. So this would be much easier. Okay. Good. Okay. Was that, well, was that yeah. an email? Do you want me to look? Did it was on email. Um, yeah, you take a look. I'll, I'll take a look too, Brie. Board goals, economic development. I think your status is in advance right now. Mm hmm Financial management, um, we need to get the budget process. What, what was your thinking on the budget process, Liz, as far as when we might kick it off? I was planning to send out the budget memo um, probably on Monday, December 3rd. Okay. Um, normally, they send it out just after the holidays. Okay. So I was looking to be approximately three to four weeks ahead of last year's process. Mm -hmm. Um, and then last year they were due back, I believe, January 31st. Um, so I would be looking at having them due back um, probably just after the new year. So give people essentially December and a little bit of the beginning of January and then start meeting with the different departments before going to FinCom. Um, and I had talked with Barbara a little bit about that timeline and also with Nate. And they, they were okay. Yeah, they thought that made a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. And I could share the budget memo that I'm planning to send out once I draft it with the board Please. first, like yep. in advance, so mm -hmm. that if you have any Good. kind of thoughts on that. I think that makes sense. How do you feel? Yeah, I, I agree. With all the big stuff on the horizon, I sort of in the back of my mind, but also in my discussions with Barbara, um, 
I was thinking it might be wise to include something in there that for the most part, unless we've reached out to a particular department directly, um, that a level service type of, of budget is what we're expecting yep. people to yep. present, um, unless prior discussion has, has occurred. Because there are a few different departments mm -hmm. that we have had specific discussions with as far as mm -hmm. hours and staffing and those kinds of things. But just generally speaking, sure. that we're looking for level service. But I think that's a good start. Yeah, I agree. Good. And then kind of see how the process evolves. If people come forward and they have a request that's not level service, I mean, I think that we they still want to hear sure. that They'll and have to defend figure what out they're... what it's. Yep. So maybe there's a piece in there, level service certainly, but especially if they're asking for more than level service, some distinction between something they'd like or something they need. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they should prioritize what they're asking for. I think Probably so, Probably can't too. do everything. Well, yeah, we'll have to update the capital improvement exactly. plan and yes. keep that moving. Okay. One of the things from my perspective is I always feel like I never know quite how the whole is. You know, that we've, we're making commitments. Some commitments are uh, five years, more. Uh -huh. We have other things that are right up close and making sure that we stay... Not that we're in control, but that we understand everybody's on the same page. And yeah. I think that's where this new process will really help us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Public safety? Um, uh, uh, the committee meets next week. Uh, I'm not aware of any major issues and slow but steady progress. They're winter tight over there now, huh? Yeah, pretty yeah. close. Yeah. yeah. Very good. nice. Looks good. Good. Grants? Um, I saw something on the community. Oh, right? I saw that too. Yeah, on the local services. We we update. just have to chat about it. I don't know if we're eligible or not, but okay. to the we extent can we can, up. we should go look for it again. Volunteerism. <clears throat> I don't have any update. <laughs> yeah. And technology. Well, we just had Richard in. Mm -hmm. I think yep. we're on top of that. So, town administrator. Um, so, for my updates, the fire department received a donation um, from the family of Diane Giordani. Um, she was the woman who was a victim in the car accident back in May. Yeah. And they actually donated a very nice and very large flag um, to the fire department. So, I was talking with um, John Showstead today. And we were wondering if maybe we should schedule some type of like dedication ceremony, invite her family, and replace the flag that's out front here because it's becoming kind of tattered. Um, he sure. thinks that it only probably has another couple weeks before we need to replace it. Hmm. So, uh, it's the same size, roughly? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very large flag. I think that's a great um, idea. It was a very nice gesture from them. Um, so I think we could proudly display that yeah. out front here so um, but wanted to talk to the board about it and just see if we thought that that nice. was a good a good idea maybe to reach out to her family and we could figure out maybe some dates that would work for them okay. and kind of go from there that sounds so, great nice okay great all right we'll move forward with that then uh, the financial team met earlier today um, Wendy is working on the valuation numbers and we're in the process of scheduling that hearing um, for the tax rate and mm -hmm. everything on November 19th at 6.30 okay. p.m. Um, we'll have a lot more information to follow, obviously, um, and that'll be a meeting that both Bree is posting for this board and Wendy will post for the Board of Assessors. Um, Wendy's also going to work on kind of expanding upon the breakdown of the various solar projects that we have going. Um, it was a it was a good meeting. We went over kind of the budget process and um, also talked with Colleen a little bit um, about some different bonds that she's holding for two different solar projects and ways in the future that we might be able to kind of get them and the planning board on the same page. Okay. if new bonds come in for different projects mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. Um, also, 
along those same lines, I sent an email to the treasurer and to Rich Bowen um, just specifying what we were looking for regarding the disposition of town-owned land, um, that we're looking for a process to be in writing, something tangible, and we want something that describes kind of step-by-step -step how that will go. Um, the other piece to that, I think, and we might want to talk about it at an upcoming meeting schedule it for an agenda item is do we need to develop a secondary process so that if people approach us and say they want to purchase a parcel how do we determine if we're even interested in selling it or not do we want to send information about the parcel say to conservation or open space um, I would think we should do that as a matter of course so maybe we want to establish that so that it seems like we've been getting a lot of inquiries lately from yeah. different people interested in various little parcels. Um, so maybe we could have like a standard process in place and kind of a, a cookie cutter response that we send to them. Like, okay, yeah. thank you for your interest. We'll pull the assessor's information and circulate it around. And if we're looking at selling it anytime soon, you're welcome to participate in the process and we yeah. would notify you further. Uh, I would like to see a timeline uh, established so once we have the process you know if do we sell them go to auction twice a year something like that how does that work because we have people who have been waiting now for oh, well over a year maybe two years for a certain piece of land to come that we have no interest in probably right and so I, it's just I think, I think we could probably even start now as far as sending the info to the different departments, engaging if we have any interest in the land or yeah. not. And then if we don't, hopefully Colleen and Rich can I think for the landlocked ones, it, unless they're substantial in you know, acreage, but for the small ones, uh, we should probably move those forward pretty quick. We have other lots that are valued at much higher money. And I think that, that needs a big discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because but somehow we need to move the ball forward. Cause but even if it was a legally buildable lot and met all the criteria, it still is something that we could be in discussion with Habitat for Humanity, where it might Absolutely. be a smaller parcel, yep. but we don't necessarily want to sell it outright. Right. We want to donate it for affordable housing. Right. So... Um, it's kind of, you know, where do you set the bar? Because we might be able to use quite a few of them. I think if it's a buildable lot, for sure we should have, it should come to us for a discussion. Mm -hmm. We should get input from the other committees and then decide. But for the ones that are not buildable and under a buildable size, so if they're less than an acre, somehow we should move those along, unless there's some reason we want to see well, even the ones that were less than an acre, we could do a friendly 40B on for um, affordable housing if it was buildable. But you certainly don't want to change the rural character of no, the community no, you by, don't. you know, <clears throat> overdeveloping parcels of land and negatively impacting the neighbors. So that's the level that it feels to me like potentially once a year um, the stakeholder boards, commissions, committees may be together um, kind of looking at philosophically what way we want to head I mean because these are fundamental questions the you know the little landlocked piece for an abutter makes some sense um, I think there there may well be a, a, a sense in general that buildable land is something that the town doesn't want to sell um, but I, I wonder if we can't get to a place of um, periodic discussion of that, including taking a look at things like 61A property that maybe is going to come out of 61A that we proactively work on so we don't en end up with another one of these 120-day things. And mm -hmm. some towns apparently once a year sit down um, planning, uh, concom, open space, Board of Selectmen and kind of look at the map of the whole town sure. and just uh, envision for the year or sure. for five years yeah. where we're going. So and I think the assessors, even the treasurer, should be sure. probably in that conversation. Yep. I think it's absolutely. a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
And then for correspondence, we have the letter for the board to sign um, to carry auto, thanking them for that donation where they service the fire vehicle. Are we all signing that? You want to sign? Yes. Sure. Okay. Adam? Would you like to start, <laughs> sir? I'll, I'll start at the bottom. Because you like that bottom spot. I, I do like that bottom spot. <laughs> and then, Every um, time I do that, I think of Joe Freitas. <laughs> Joe, wherever you are, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Then we also have um, an invitation to the veterans celebrations that are being held on Monday, November 12th. Um, there is a breakfast at 10 a.m. here at the townhouse, followed by a ceremony at 11 a.m. at the town green. Um, Bree and I attended the veterans luncheon today. We were invited to that, and it was very nice. It sounds like the celebration might be a little bit larger than what we originally anticipated and may involve a road closure. I did check. Oh, is it no, not? No longer? No road closure. Okay, no I more road closure. Detail. Cancel that. Okay. Um, but we are going to need a police detail, so we're in process of getting um, so Chief Dillon on board. What would the... Two things. Uh, what, so 10, 10 a.m. breakfast here at the townhouse. Okay. And then 11 a.m. over at the town green. Okay. And what's happening on the town green? Um, a very nice flag ceremony. They have some very large flags being brought in. Um, a whole lot of history behind each one. Um, a unique navy flag, I believe. Um, was that the one that they said was in? Was that the one that was in um, World War Two? I believe so. They, they gave us a, a breakdown flag. of each oh, of the nice. flags. There were different mm -hmm. flags that, that will be there. So it's it they, should be a real treat for everybody to get to. Are going to have Mr. Trainer that. say a few words? Um, I assume so. We, we we're getting kind of like bits and pieces Who's about the Who's the master the of ceremonies for this? That we don't know. Is it Joy? I, I'm not sure. There is somebody that travels with these flags. Was that no. the gentleman that was speaking today? So there yes. is somebody who... From Halifax, Mark? I don't know. He didn't I'm look sure I familiar. I can get more information. Yeah, well, yeah we, we can them. find out about but that. But he did do a presentation in Halifax. Well, Mark, been, been, they've been all over. It was. Mike has that giant flag that right, they take they put around on the, truck, the yeah. country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might be him then. That was here because he had a large picture of what some of the flags looked like when they were displayed in Medford Town Center. Well, he so. goes out to like uh, all over South Dakota for the. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. So that might be it. Then. Yeah. Okay. It was great. Um, it was pretty wonderful, the picture that he had of that. And he's trying to get it so the picture that would be taken would be of the green. They would be with the gazebo. The flags would be along the house line. And then he wants to get the church steeple in it. So the view. Sounds like the cover the of the next uh, report. Yeah, it sure it does. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice, very so nice. Good. So, Roxanne is also involved. Okay, right? good. Are they going to be reading the names of the veterans again, or somehow recognizing our veterans? Uh, that I am not. A, I don't know. Okay. Of that, I know that's something that we do for the Memorial Day. Right. I would hope they would. Um, It'd be so, nice just to yeah. read the names of the veterans I told again. We could get them the right because we from have it. Floor. Okay. So, so is Roxanne and Joy working together on this? She, Roxanne was here today. Yeah. So, and, um, so I don't know. I said that we would catch up with each other and kind of. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a little yeah, program. I, yeah. yeah so, exactly. So it's organized yeah. and. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I know, Mr. Silva, because he had mentioned he was here and they spoke. He wasn't here today, but a different day. Yeah. And. Um, we're both bringing Doris. Terrific. And they, he said she would probably love to get out. Good. Good. I hope it's a yes. uh, beautiful yeah. day. That'd be nice. There was um, a lot of better today. Good. Very yeah, I impressed. Too. Walked by, I saw it. Mm. Place was crowded. Very nice. So we have an anonymous donation for $1,000 that was made to the Plimpton Public Library. Really good. Well, wasn't that nice? Yes. Great. Very it's nice. It's an Very every, nice. every year thing. Been yes, going an on annual for tradition. A long time. That is so yeah. nice. Um, and then from the Plimpton Halifax Express, we had Tales of Old Plimpton and some nice information about the early voting. That's a wrap. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, dates to remember. 
Our next meeting is November 5th. Okay. And then we take a week off and we come back November 19th. Celebration at uh, the Green, we just talked about. And we're closed on November 12th. Yes, the town, with the exception of the breakfast, it will be here okay. in the large meeting room. Okay. Minutes? All right, I had some changes on the 10 1. So I'll just run through mine. First, um, you, you're missing John's initials at the top. You've got everybody except him. Shocked. Oh, shocked. Yeah, and then um, updates and discussion. We met first with Scott Ripley, and then it ended with um, that sentence, CJ will research possibility of having another study done by OCPC at no cost. That was what I said, but Scott jumped on that. So I didn't end up doing it. So Okay. I don't know if you just want to scratch that because Scott is working with OCPC about doing okay. the um, another traffic study at no cost. Or mm -hmm. you could say that we will research the possibility. Why don't we just delete it? And then All right, we'll just yeah, delete it. Okay. Just delete. All right, so then um, the second one, Selectman's assistant updated the BOS at the Moon and Back Cafe. Common Bittler's license is not complete. How about if we just leave it at not complete, period? Yeah. And then yeah, JT the will deliver another application to the cafe. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went down to under, let's see, the first vote um, was COA recommended the appointment of Nancy Butler to the COA. So I just dropped the two. And I think that is, yep, that's all I've got for that one. Okay. I'm okay. okay. Uh, one thing I have is um, with the acronyms. I think like COA, we know what it means, but on the first time we use it, let's spell it out, Council of A&G. Okay, so that okay. anybody reading this, you know, that supposedly that's what this for. You don't have to be a townie to, yeah, understand, yeah, exactly. to be yeah. able to do somebody for the minutes. And here on this one. Breathe it. It's spell out fine. Okay. Other than that, I'm fine. Okay. So I need them both. Let's All right. So I'll is. make a motion that we accept the minutes of October 1st as amended. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So on 1015, I had a bunch of changes. Oh All right. So first one was just kind of tweaking our discussion about the, the speed limit and maybe changing it. Um, all right, so he goes, Highway Superintendent Scott Ripley and BOS discuss the speed limit survey completed. I'd get rid of the back in the, in the 70s. And then BOS discuss possibility of having the default speed limit set at 30 for the town. I would start that with something along the lines with to help protect and maintain the town's rural character and improve public safety. BOS discussed possibility of having a default speed set at 30 for the town and just leave good. it at yeah. that. Yeah, sounds good. good. All right, and then um, <clears throat> all right, then we go down to Mr. Ripley presented a request to have transfer station sticker fees um, increased. Actually, I don't think the fee increased. It was just based on dwelling units. Yeah, based on dwelling on units. On dwelling yeah. units, okay. And then... Um, mm -hmm. MR made motion to approve and sign the employment contract with the fire chief, Stephen Silva, or, you know, newly appointed fire chief. Uh, a contract of the fire chief. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're kind of splitting hairs, but, or we yeah. could just leave it. The employment, I think the with contract, this, okay, with, with the fire the, chief? With the fire chief, that's okay. what we're doing. Stephen Silva, okay, um, let's see. And then um, down to correspondence, thank you letters. I think it was just to Allison McSweeney, not no, both no, of them. No, it was both. We was had two it? letters. It was Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Oh, was it? Okay, I missed yeah, that. Two, Sorry two about letters. that. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's all set then. And, and it then. was Alexander by himself. Oh, perfect, right. okay. Yeah. All right, that's all I had. Uh, there's one minor one um, down here. Uh, it's responses, two responses instead of just response. Okay, right there. Two responses. Since you're the recording okay. recorder of those. The recorder of the. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So I make a motion in minutes of the 15th as be approved as amended. All right. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And if you need me to translate, yeah. um, let me know. <laughs> and then we had, I had the uh, executive session of 10-15 as well. Yep. Um, you sent me a correction on the spelling of the fellow's name, which I will make. Okay. I didn't so. know if John had anything else. Yeah, I didn't even pick up that. Where was that? It's Steve Terry. He's got Perry. Oh, yes. spelled wrong. Yeah, okay. One R, right? Yes, okay. T-E-R-I. How'd that happen? <laughs> wow. All right, so I'll make a motion that we accept the exec executive session minutes from 1015 as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll get that to you, Bree. Yay, we're current again. Wow. So on the 1015 for the open session, who did the second on that? Mark Russo made the motion, but... I think I, I made the second. Was that second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Rants and raves? Rants and raves. How about those Red Sox? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody's going to have that one. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> that was a great game last oh night. Oh, my. What a great series. Holy cow. I'm so tired. It's I am. Tired. I know. I'm glad that it's over. <laughs> I woke up at 1 o'clock on that long room, and I checked, and I said, 1 to 1. I got to watch this. 3 o'clock, I couldn't even see. Just 16th yeah. inning, I signed up. Can you imagine playing that I woke that up long? at quarter of 3. I had 8 hours of sleep, and I got to watch the last inning while all you guys were asleep. <laughs> but you saw him lose. <laughs> I did what John did. A lot of people did that. Oh, I woke up at midnight 12. Yeah, and yeah, the game was still well, going. The game was still going, so then I watched Crazy. it. And I stopped at 3. Oh, my gosh. It's like, I'm done. Crazy. Great team, yeah, great game, fun. great series. It was, it was. It was a lot of fun. The only quibble I had was they should have given uh, David Price the most valuable player. Agreed. Totally agreed. Yeah. Yeah, he did an amazing job. And he and did. thank goodness for the uh, the opportunity for reven redemption. It's like a model for yes. all of us yeah. at any point. Uh, did you watch the game? I did. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, wow. Amazing. Okay. I think we're ra a wrap. All right, so we're back next week. Yes. Yes. Okay, regular time? Six o'clock. Yes. Six yes. o'clock, okay. All right. I make a motion that we close the Selectman's open meeting. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.